Hi, I'm Dr. Tiffany Denny. Uh, today I want to talk to you about using crutches, more specifically about how to progress off of crutches. Um, and the important thing about using crutches and progressing off of crutches is not to rush it. Uh, I know that oftentimes a surgeon gives you a, a timeline, like in a week you should be off your crutches. I have not one single time in four knee surgeries that I've had now, uh, I've not one time gotten off my crutches in the timeline that was estimated by the doctor. And uh, part of that is that I am unwilling to come off of my crutches if I can't walk without a limp. And I think that's so, so essential for making sure that you're not compensating with other parts of your body, but also so that you don't train your brain to walk incorrectly. Um, that's going to inhibit your ability to get full range of motion back and full strength back in your leg. And that's whether you've had knee surgery, ankle surgery, hip surgery, I don't care what it is. Uh, I believe that you have got to be able to walk without a limp before you get rid of your crutches. So in order to progress to that, there are a few things that are really important. Uh, to be able to do. The first thing is, when you're starting to walk with crutches, you want to make sure that the crutches and your affected leg are like one limb. So, of course, if you uh, have any sort of weight-bearing restrictions, like if you're non-weight-bearing, you're going to be on crutches, you're going to have to do the hop through. But as soon as your doctor tells you, you can put some weight on your leg, Put some weight on your leg and uh, start doing it. Even if it's uncomfortable, it's going to be a little uncomfortable. It's going to uh, maybe even hurt a little bit, kind of find your edge there. But you got to start putting weight on your leg. And what I see a lot of times is people start by putting their little toe down and then hobbling through. And at first, I know that it kind of feels like that's all you can do. But one of the first things that I start doing when I come out of surgery and I get on crutches is I start trying to pull my toes up, move my affected leg and my crutches together, put my heel and my toe down. Even if I'm not actually putting any weight in my heel, it's fine. But at least I put my heel and my toe down. I'm putting a lot of weight into my crutches right now and barely any into my leg, and that's fine. And then you step through, and I even did a little toe heel there, which is incorrect, but sometimes you do it. And then I try to leave my toes on the ground in the back leg, squeeze my quad, meaning squeeze your top thigh, and, and then let my hip go backwards. This is really, really important to start letting your leg go backwards. And at first, it will feel terrible. You might at first only be able to let it go back just that far and then keep going. But it's important to try. Let your leg go back as far as you can because that is going to be more like normal gait pattern where you let your leg go back. And as soon as you can, start heel toeing, putting more weight into your foot, step through, let your leg go back, which is super hard, especially if you're wearing a brace. And then your next step is to start pushing off of your toes. Actually make yourself put some weight into your toes and push off. Again, at first, this feels terrible. It will hurt in your knee. It's not hurting your knee. It's just that when you push off your toes, your quad is firing. It has to fire to keep your knee from buckling. So it's actually a really good quad strengthener, like a quad rehabilitator, but it does feel crappy, so you just have to do your best. Not even going to be professional about it. I'm just going to say it feels terrible. It feels like crap. Fine. Do your best on that. Once you feel like, okay, I've got a pretty good gait pattern and I can do a little push off, you can put plenty of weight into your foot like you're not using your crutches a whole lot. You get on the step through, you want to get a little knee bend to walk through as well. That's important. Once you've kind of gotten all that, then you can lose one of your crutches. Whatever you do, don't be like Dr. House. You've ever seen that show. He uses his cane in the wrong hand that drives him nuts. Your crutch or your cane or whatever you're using goes opposite of your leg because, again, it's, it goes with your leg. And you don't want to be leaning onto that side to put weight into your crutch. You want the support. 
So once you can do this, it's the same thing. Make sure you can heel toe, push off of your toes, let your leg go back behind you. Rather than if you're having to go lean and then you hobble, you're not ready for one crutch yet. And at first, to make that transition, it's going to require you to take a little bit of discomfort because you're gonna to have to push through a few steps of discomfort before you can really start to feel better in this. Um, so again, once you can basically meet all those criteria of walking with your single crutch and you're starting to get very light on your single crutch, you're not getting too much pain or fatigue after you use it, that's another important thing, then you work without your crutch. This is where you have to say, okay, can I walk? without a limp. And in order to walk without a limp, you have to push through your toes in the back. That's the number one thing people don't do, and it's one of the number one reasons people limp. If I don't push through my toes, I'm gonna kind of lose the stability in my leg, and I'm gonna not trust it, so I lean off of it and I hobble. So that's really important. I often start, I often walk forward, and then I walk backwards and push off my toe. It's a challenge. And for reference, I'm about three and a half weeks out from surgery right now. I got off crutches, uh, I totally got off crutches a little bit before the three week mark. You can decide what you will about that, whether it's slow or fast or whatever. To me, it doesn't matter the length of time it takes, it matters whether I can walk without a limp or not. Um, if I carry something, of really any, like if I try and carry a gallon of milk, I will limp. So you have to kind of know that and be prepared for it. Um, another thing that you can do to help get you off your crutches is start to put a little like single leg balancing weight into your leg and start to work that way and say, oh, can I support all my weight? Yes. Great. That's another thing that you can do. Uh, that's all I've got. If you're wondering about my crutches, because they are weird, I'll tell you about them. They're called Moby Legs. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever used them in four surgeries, but the tops of them uh, are like kind of a comfortable, squishy material, and they actually push in. They're supposed to be more ergonomic. I have not used these non-weight bearing a whole lot, so like I haven't had to do the hopping a lot with them. They seem pretty ergonomically sound. I have another surgery in a few months where I'll be non-weight bearing for several weeks, so I'll let you know after that if, uh, if they keep me feeling less fatigued um, than regular crutches. But so far I like them. They're super sturdy and my armpits don't feel terrible at all, so if that's helpful to you, you can fork over a little extra money and get Moby legs. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I uh, hope this helps.